We're back with another jam-packed show full of running. I kind of say we, but actually, Anna, she's not there, because she's off somewhere rather remote, but also pretty special, that we're going to tell you about a little bit later on. So standing in, someone called Sarah. Have you heard of her? Hello. Hi, I remember Hi. you. You're the girl off the video. I am the girl off the video, yeah. Should we take a look at what's coming up? Let's do it. I can't think right now. Six years old. No, I, you? I just want to show I can't remember being 16. So. They can stop now. That was so bad. You got a number, right? Oh, gosh. No, no, we'll leave it. We'll leave it this bit in, Rick. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay, so we're kicking off with Inside Track, where we go through all the new exciting launches. I've got one that I'm going to start off with, and oh, yeah? it is Super Feet Insoles. Mm. Have you ever worn an insole in your shoe? I Rick? use them often, actually. They're good, aren't they? Yeah, very, very useful. Very Especially good. if one sole hurts a little bit more than the other. Mm. So this is the big question that I had as well before testing them out, is why would you have an insole in your shoe? And after speaking to Superfeet, the biggest thing that I took away is that when you buy a shoe off the shelf, that yeah. is made for every single type of runner. It's right. one size fits all, right? Obviously, you've got your different sizes. Yeah. But one size, your size, fits everyone in that size. But with the insole? It adapts to you. Oh. So it's a way of personalising your shoe to your foot and making sure that you're prolonging them as well. And this is a really handy tip. Sometimes if you're doing like marathon training or ultra training or kind of any long term training, you get all the way through. Then it's two weeks out from the race and you go, oh, my shoes are worn out. I need a new pair of shoes. I haven't got time to break them in because I'm in the taper. You can use an insole. Insole. Yes. It prolongs the life of your shoe. It gives you that little bit extra. Can you cut them? to fit your shoe, to yeah. shape your shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it really does feel a difference. So I've been out running in these, I've just been running in my normal trainers and then I took the insole of that out and put a pair of super feet insoles in and wow, feel the difference. Yeah. Amazing. Definitely go check these out. They will last 500 miles or 12 months, whatever comes sooner. And they cost wise, they go from 40 to 50 pounds and they've got loads mm. of different ones available, but it's the new adapt range that's just launched. Cost wise, speaking of which, take a look at these shoes. How much do you think these are? Ooh. Oh, I never know this shoe. I mean, have a guess, go on, just have a guess. Well, nowadays you're paying at least £100 for a pair of running mm -hmm. shoes. No? £35. These are the Decathlon Jog Flow. Now, they are designed for races basically up to 10k. That doesn't mean that you can only use them uh, once for one 10k race, as me and Sarah <laughs> were talking before, because I was thinking, well, that's still quite a cost per <laughs> mile. Disposable uh, shoes. <laughs> disposable shoes. Not great for the environment. Uh, you can use them um, as many times as you like uh, until they wear out. Um, up to about 10K. That's what they've been built for, for shorter distance races. They've done a lot of studies putting them together, uh, basically on looking at how flexible the, the, the shoe is on the insole uh, for shorter races, which yeah. I think is really interesting. The, uh, the drop of the shoe, as well as about four millimeters, remember the drop that's from the heel to, to the toe. So quite a small drop and weight wise, get this, 203 grams for a size 39. So that's a European size 39, which off the top of my head, I think is a size six in the UK, size seven in the US. I can do currencies too. Wow, look at the conversion. But that as a shoe, I think it's so nice yeah. to know that with an affordable shoe, mm. there is research, tech, development all going into that as well. I've not seen anything quite like it at that price point. Well, let's get- We could be on the shopping it. channel. Yeah, we could. <laughs> <laughs> Andy actually got to go behind the scenes and see how these were made. So if you're interested to know more, go and check that video out. Okay, another launch from me, Hoka Tecton X. Oh, I love a Hoka. I am excited about this because I think carbon plated shoes in the road world are, you know, pretty standard now. Mm -hmm. You see lots. This is a carbon plated trail shoe. Oh. Which is very cool. So Tecton X, it comes from tectonic plates and mm. that's what inspired the design for the new carbon fiber plate design. It's not just one, it's two, right. running parallel heel to toe across the shoe. Now, I think this is gonna be really incredible because back in December when I ran uh, my ultra marathon, there were some Hoka athletes there who were running in the either Carbon X2 or Carbon X3. Right. And you know, it's a road shoe, so it's obviously got less traction than yep. a trail shoe and they were flying down the trails. Really? So they might they, have just been good though. 
Oh yeah. no, they were amazing. Yeah. But they were they were doing all of that in a shoe that has a lot less traction than you would expect. So yeah. put them in a trail shoe that has a carbon plate. And See what they can do. They're going to be breaking times. I've got the Nike React Infinity Run Flyknit 3. Now this is unbelievably Nike's most tested shoe. Wow. So you kind of know what you're getting when you buy one of the, the pair of these. Um, smooth, steady, they've got slightly higher stacks. Um, the bottom of the shoe is wider than the carriage. This really interests me. So it's kind of a bit, a bit like a inflatable dinghy. Mm. You know, like Which you're sitting quite in the middle. Which is nice because you don't want to kind you of. You haven't feel got like you're a lot still. of swipe, but it's it's quite profound. Yeah. Well, I think when you look at it, because like yeah. So if you are maybe someone who is slightly unsteady in the ankle, I mean, these shoes would be really good for you. some running news next and since I'm here Rick I thought we could talk through some news stories. Why not? Is there one that's caught your eye? Well this one's basically been making headlines around the world. Uh, the parents of a six-year-old boy who was made to run a marathon have been getting a backlash. Now they've actually been speaking the influencer parents Cammy and Ben Crawford ran the flying pig marathon in Cincinnati in Ohio with their six-year-old son Rainer and they've actually been talking about it um, recently, and they basically said, you know, no one was forced to do it. They went out, they looked after him, they checked he had enough water. But of course, when it comes to running a marathon, a lot of medics and physios uh, say there is just simply not enough data to know whether it's safe for a six year old to run a marathon because at that stage, your bones and your muscles are still developing. So the, con the, the knock on effect from lots of impact and force may have negative effects on that. So mm. big backlash kind of everywhere about that story. It's, de it's certainly a big debate yeah. going on online. And it's definitely not to say that children can't enjoy running. You know, park not run events all. all over the world, you can start from as young as four. And they yeah. do acknowledge there that 5K is a long way for someone who's four years old. Yeah. So first of all, it's got to be fun. And they've yeah. got to enjoy it because, I mean... I can't think running a marathon when I was six years old. No, I, you? I, I can't remember being 16, so. <laughs> yeah. So long ago. I didn't even have photos back then. What um, do you mean? It was eight years ago. Oh, right. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, moving on. Yeah. Um, club runner, Ellis Cross. Did you see this? Ellis Cross. I he did. beat Mo Farah to win the London Vitality 10,000 metres. I went down in... to watch it. Really? Yeah. What yeah, was yeah. the atmosphere like? It was a lovely, lovely day. But, I mean, he couldn't really believe it. He works in a running shop. Um, but he's actually really, really good. He so, was insane. Yeah, no. The kick that he had coming round and overtaking Mo Farah was incredible. It was so cool. He paid Imagine 37 quid to get in. As well. <laughs> 37 quid to beat Mo Farah. Yeah, That's yeah. Quite good. Didn't get any of the hotels. You know, he had to pay for his own hotel. Well, I mean, from now, he's no. probably getting all of that. I wonder if he got his 37 quid back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nice guy though, nice guy. Really? What else have you got? Well, I would like to talk about the British 5K record that was broken Ooh. by Eilish McCoffin. Oh yeah, how, how fast, how fast? 14.45. Oh my, that is incredible. Absolutely, like unfathomably quick. Yeah, I mean, we're always kind of like shocked when we hear about these times. But I said this a couple of months ago. But don't you feel like so many records are going down, Sarah, at the moment? Yeah, I, it does feel like every single time there's a big gathering together of people, it's like... Something happens. What, what record is going to be broken today? It's almost like there was a pandemic and it stopped running or something <laughs> people, slowed it down. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. And people have come back and yeah. they're hungry to break <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. go with that. Mm. Have you got any other stories? Yeah, so this is one that um, I've spent a lot of time talking about in the last couple of weeks, actually. The Samsung advert, did you see it? Where yeah. the woman goes running in the middle of the night? Yeah, I did see that. So she's followed, her, she's followed around by an owl. She's kind of fist bumping, high-fiving people running through the night. A lot of backlash, obviously, people calling it unrealistic mm. because women very rarely would go out and run through the middle of a city at night. Received a lot of backlash and Samsung did actually apologise uh, if they gave across the wrong impression. Yeah, because I mean, running in the dark is sometimes unavoidable. Mm. But personally, I would not be heading out after midnight on a run. I know some people do and that, you know, you can do it in groups. Mm. But I think having that as a, I mean, it's not really that relatable. Yeah, I mean, even as a bloke, I wouldn't be going out at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> to run. I it, mean, waking up at six for a run is bad enough. Yeah, to be fair, I actually can't run at the <laughs> moment. <laughs> so so there's, there's, no there's, de there's definitely no way I'd be going out at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. 
A lot of news this week, though. A lot of news. So, Sarah, I think we can all agree that your general knowledge is pretty terrible. Uh, I mean, OK, it's not great, but if you could run right now, I bet I would get more questions right than you on the treadmill challenge. Mm, well, let's try and see if that could happen. How about I get someone who could be my legs, but I still get to use my brain? Aha! And then we'll see who gets more questions right. Me or you? Oh, no. This is the closest to actual running that I've got in 18 months. <laughs> well, welcome to the treadmill challenge. Um, how are you feeling? Powerful. Do you have confidence in Freddie, who is being your legs for today? I've never had legs so lovely. <laughs> Brilliant, okay. So you're going first, asking the questions. We'll take it in turns. Hopefully your general knowledge is rubbish. Freddie maxed out the treadmill last time he was on this. So this time, if he maxes it out, we're moving on to incline. Sad that we have to get to that stage, <laughs> but Freddie is amazing. Shall we get started? Game face. Okay, Let's Freddie, get up to speed. I'm going to 11, you're going to 16. I feel like I should have been revising. Okay, we are there. Okay, I'm at speed, let's go. How many players make up a rugby union team? Oh no! Uh, 11? No. No! Okay, up we go. Okay, your first question. Which continent is made up of the most countries? Africa. Oh. In what year was John Lennon assassinated? Uh, um, 1989? No! No! What is the most common injury among long distance runners? Achilles. Mm. Runners ah. Ah. Sorry. What was the most watched show on Netflix UK in 2021? Um, the Crown. Mm. The Witcher? Oh. What? Never even heard of it. Sorry. Who wrote The Hobbit? J.R. Tolkien. Oh. How much weight did Eddie Hall deadlift in 2016, making him the world record holder, Sarah? Um, 216. I mean, that was just a really remote guess, wasn't it? I go, this is such fun. That's ridiculous. What is the population of London to the nearest million? Well, I know this, it's eight million. That's wrong, that's wrong, it's eight. Oh, Freddie, he's letting you down. Which sport does a triathlon start with? Swimming. Very good, yes. very good, very good. Uh -huh. In Greek mythology, who is the god of the sea? Odessa. Mm. Oh. Poseidon. Who plays the runner in the 1976 film Marathon Man? Oh, I have no idea. Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> 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 Uh, 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 Grenoble? Mm. Yes. Who wrote A Runner's High, My oh, Life in Motion? Incline. He's on incline! Um, Sorry about this. Vassos, Alexander. Mm. No. Dean Carnages? Oh, there we go. Okay. Just about. Oh, how many Olympic gold medals does Swim have? About eight? Mm. Four? Oh, really? Picked him up a bit too much. In what year was the first Boston Marathon held? 1976. 1897. I can't. My God. Well done, Brad. Keep going. Here we go. Well done, Freddie. You need to stop now. Oh, you know what? Although I'm so pleased with my victory. I can't believe I was slightly wrong on the London question. I said slightly <laughs> wrong. I said eight. It was 8.9 million. You got a round up, Rick. You got you a have, round you up. Yeah, I've got a round up. <laughs> Should we do your favourite part? Ask T R C. Yes, okay, I'll kick off with one. Mark has asked us, how often should you replace your running shoes? Ooh, uh, can I have a guess? Yeah. Uh, is it if you run 20 miles a week, 
after four years. Is that oh, wrong? No. <laughs> Is that really out? No, you should definitely replace. So the, the kind of recommended guideline, and it will vary a little bit, is around three to 500 miles. So if you're running 20 miles a week, then you're probably looking at between four <laughs> to six months, not years. Yeah. You know, it's a bit close. Have, that was so bad. We're you got a number, right? Oh, gosh. No, no, we're leaving, we're leaving this bit in, Rick. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Do you want me to carry on? <laughs> I'll carry on. I think so, I meant four to five months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course you did. Of course you did. Do you want me to go through what you should look for so yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. waiting you? I'm just not going to say anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, obviously it's going to depend on how you're running and what you're running on. So the material of the shoe versus the terrain that you're running on. So if you've got a shoe that doesn't have a lot of traction on the bottom or doesn't have those like really deep lugs that you mm -hmm. kind of get on trail shoes, then it's probably going to wear away quicker, especially if you're running on kind of rocky road that's going to mm -hmm. erode the bottom of your shoe, basically, compared to if you're on really groomed trail or smooth road or even on a track warning signs to mm. look out for when you need to replace your shoe are you getting injured a little bit more are you yeah. feeling a little bit more sore after a run or have you started to get blisters it's not just at the beginning of the life cycle of the shoe that you might get a blister towards the end they might start falling away in places and might cause blisters just look at the bottom and see if it's knackered well that was my third point also, use your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> you know what a new shoe looks like compared to a really old shoe. So if your toes are poking out through the top of the shoe, if you can see a hole coming away in the bottom, no matter how much you love your favorite pair of shoes, it's time to get a fresh pair. Michael asks, how do I prepare to run at altitude if I live at sea level? Mm. Uh, it's a good question, this. That is a good uh, question. Apart from the obvious of trying to train in higher zones, which you might not be able to do, so we completely get that. There are actually a couple of really useful uh, things that you can do to set yourself up for the day. So obviously don't just go and run at altitude for the first time in a race if you've not been up there before, because different bodies adapt very differently. You'll find some people will be hardly affected at all, while other people will really struggle for oxygen. And that's, of course, because it has a lower concentration of altitude of oxygen at altitude. Have you run at altitude? I haven't, no. I'm scared of running at altitude. Really? Well, I just we send think, Anna for all that stuff. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I've run quite high, but I don't think I've actually ever done altitude. But I think the thing that scares me is that quite often it can start to have an effect on your body before yeah. you can actually physically feel it. In the, in the same way that running uphill is so much harder than running on the flat, running at altitude will feel so much harder, but you might not be feeling the effects of altitude. It'll You've run quite high. Like we won't go into that this week, yeah. but maybe next week. Yeah. Uh, anticipate the race will be slower, of course, when you're running at altitude compared to at sea level. Mm. Uh, this will definitely help with your stress levels and stuff as you pre prepare for it. So it's not going to be as fast as if you were running at your normal you know, sea level or thereabouts. So prepare yourself for it to be a bit slower. Do some interval and hill rep training. Uh, that would be really useful as well heading into this. And of course, try uh, running in training zones um, and have a specific lower pace in mind when you go into it. Yeah, I think it's just being prepared, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Be prepared. Prepare to fail, fail to prepare. I hope that helps, Michael. We've kept you waiting for long enough. It's time to hear about the incredible challenge that Anna is taking on this month. Anna? Over to you. I'm so sad not to be there to present the monthly show this month. This is the first one I've ever missed, but I'm just out on my last run before I fly over to Croatia to tackle Tribe's Run for Love 4. So what is it? It's 260 kilometers over six days. So that is roughly about a marathon a day, but the days are all split up into different distances on different routes and you just complete that distance and then you're done for the day. The longest day is 78 kilometers. That's the one that I'm pretty nervous about. I'm so excited to go out to Croatia. It's gonna be really mountainous, should be pretty stunning. We're expecting the weather to be quite hot. So that'll be a bit of a challenge. When I did this the last time, we documented it all on the running channel. Now there won't be a series like that this time, but I'll be keeping you all up to date on my Instagram, Anna the Runner, and just really looking forward to taking on this challenge. So Tribe Run for Love is an event that raises money for the Tribe Freedom Foundation. And what that is, is a charity that 
aims to end modern day slavery. So in this day and age, lots of women, young children and men are trafficked into modern slavery in this country and all around the world. So the money that's raised goes to set up safe houses for those people. And it's a really, a really incredible cause. One of the girls running is from the charity Ella's and the last time we did this, she gave us a talk about the type of help that our funds raised can go towards, you know, she gave us case studies of women who had used Ella's and uh, yeah, that I suppose is what really keeps you going when, the, when it gets really tough out there. So thank you to everyone who's donated to my Just Giving as well. Wow, that sounds amazing. And Anna is actually out running this incredible race as we speak, as we're filming this. And if you wanna hear more about how she's getting on, then head over to her Instagram to see more from her epic adventure. And we will see you next time on The Running Channel. Bye.